And Michelle, is she on there? I can't. I don't see Michelle. Okay, who else is there? But Adam's on. Adam. I'm here. We have guests in there. Okay. Okay. Do we got? This is uh, Dylan Tannehill. Uh -oh. I'm here. That's me. The <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we just we're just missing Michelle right now, right? Mm -hmm. And she was planning on coming. Is that correct? No Michelle tonight. Okay. Keep you on, on, you know, whatever. I mean, yeah, she's she's going to be at the meeting. Right. Yeah, okay. Not at the meeting. <laughs> Online. Online. Yep, got it. Okay, so she's going to be here. So we're just missing one person. Okay, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Do we have any announcements, Rodney? Um, <laughs> could be a little bit early for him. So maybe I, I could report on that. Um, City Council, we had everything that you recommended go through. Oh, cool. 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 Are we getting the raise <laughs> January 1st? <laughs> That's what the hot chocolate and cookies are. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I wonder, I wonder if, you know, how we can add things as we see fit. I wonder if we added a raise for ourselves yeah. in one of those lineups. Yeah. If it just, we should try that. That's what the Senate and the Congress do. You yeah. just yeah. slip, the, <laughs> slip something in. Well, know. they do it. You have, it's already there. They have to vote it down. So if they don't even see it, it's going to go through. Mm, okay. Have you guys looked at the minutes? Yes. Somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion. We approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Motion by Steve, seconded by Brett, to approve the minutes as presented. We're going to try and do this. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Okay. Minutes <coughs> are approved. You already talked about council actions. So the first business item is election and appointment of the 2021 Planning and Zoning Commission officers. So I'm happy to stay chair, but it's up to you guys. Ron, didn't you uh, want to throw your hat in? Madam uh, Chair, I'll make the motion that we, uh, well, I guess, do we do we need we, we just need to make a motion to uh, uh, reinstate or keep or the nominate. same keep nominate the same, keep nominate. the same slate for 2021 yeah that'll work okay. i'll we'll second that <laughs> okay so ron made the motion and, and brett seconded to um, leave the chair and co-chair positions as they are any other nominations Hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Business item one is off the list. Congratulations. Yeah. Don't forget the paychecks now, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys get a you guys both get a real fat pay raise, right? Right. Yeah. Your second yeah. Right. Second term you get a pay right. Raise. <laughs> you get a raise too besides. Okay. <laughs> Business item number two, sub Christy is scheduled to present. Is she? She's online doing stuff. Awesome. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Steve Watkins, Watkins, Principal Planner for the City of Nampa. The action requested from you this evening is the approval or denial of the East Ridgeview Subdivision Number One. It is located north of Eustick Road, on the west side of North Franklin Boulevard. Did you go away, Christy? All I'm hearing is static. It just got really static again on my screen. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're hearing it too. too. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's 
me or something going on there. But um, anyway, um, it is located inside the city limits and is zoned RS7. It is bordered on the north and west by future phases of the St. Louis subdivision in the RS7 zone and on the south and east by Canyon County residential properties. In October of 2018, there was a rezone of this property from RS 8.5 to RS 7 with a new development agreement and, re and approval of the preliminary plat for the Ridgeview Estates subdivision. In March and September of 2020, phases one and two of the Ridgeview Estates subdivision were recorded. And in April of 2020, phase three was approved and it is currently under construction. In September of 2020, the remaining area of the Ridgeview Estates subdivision was sold to a new owner, and the new owner is now developing it out as East Ridgeview subdivision. So the numbering is going to start over. The development itself proposes 94 residential lots and three common lots on 25.51 acres. It is located within the city limits in an RS7 zone and it conforms to the approved preliminary plat layout for Ridgeview Estate subdivision. And it also conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards for the city of Nampa. So staff feels that it is appropriate for the commission to recommend approval of the final plat for the East Ridgeview subdivision number one to city council with the conditions as listed in the staff report and any other conditions that you see fit to impose. I will stand for any questions. Any questions for Christy? Okay. What do you guys want to do? Madam Chair, I'll make the motion that we recommend approval of the uh, final plat for East Ridgeview number one um, for Challenger development represented by Will William Mason Mason Associates with all conditions of staff. Second. Okay, motion by Ron, second by Matt to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay of that one. <coughs> Business item number three. Christy. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. The action requested from you this evening is the approval or denial of the Heron Ridge subdivision number one located on the southeast corner of South Middleton Road and West Greenhurst Road. It is located inside the city limits and is zoned RS7. It's bordered on the south, east, and west sides by Canyon County residential or undeveloped property. There are future phases of the subdivision to the southeast, and there is RS7 zone sub, an RS7 zone subdivision to the north, adjacent to the Red Hawk Golf Course property. Annexation and zoning to RS7 and the preliminary plat were approved in August of 2020. This development proposes 39 residential lots and seven common lots on 12.91 acres. It is located within the city limits and is zoned RS7. It conforms to the approved preliminary plat layout for the Heron Ridge subdivision, and it conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards for the city of Nampa. Staff feels that it is appropriate for this commission to recommend approval of the final plat for Heron Ridge subdivision number one to city council with the conditions as listed in the staff report and any other conditions you see fit to impose. I will stand for any questions. Any questions for any Christy? Questions? Okay. And Chair, I'll make a motion that we recommend to City Council uh, approval of a final plat for Heron Ridge number one on the southeast corner of Greenhurst Road and Middleton Road for 39 single family detached lots for Schultz development being represented by Brandt Agency Incorporated with all conditions of staff. Second. 
Second. Okay, motion by Jeff, second by Steve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Business item number four. Ms. Parker, that's you. That is me. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, the action requested of you tonight is the uh, recommendation of uh, approval or denial for North Meadows subdivision final plat. At zero and 129 Second Avenue North for Ken Cook of Timberland Surveying, representing Zenith Homes. The property is zoned RML, limited multifamily residential, uh, and is surrounded by our RML zoning to the northwest and south. Uh, to the southeast is heavy industrial uh, zoning, being uh, Marigold Logistics. Uh, the development was issued building permits in June of this year as zoning allows for multiple structures on one lot. Uh, and the primary uh, preliminary plat was approved in September of this year. Uh, the lot totals 1.16 acres uh, and the subdivision proposes 20 buildable lots with zero common lots. <laughs> The findings of fact are that it is in RML zone within the city limits. Uh, the final plat conforms with the approved preliminary plat and conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards. Uh, the recommended conditions are those found in your staff report and, and any other conditions that you may wish to impose. I will stand for any questions. Anybody have any questions? Madam Chair, I'll make the motion that we uh, recommend approval of the final plat for North Meadow subdivision in an RML zoning district um, at zero and 129 Second Avenue North for 20 single family townhomes uh, for Zenith Homes LLC with all conditions of staff. I'll second. Okay, motion by Ron, seconded by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have 12 minutes until we can do um, public hearing. So we'll resume at seven o'clock.
one. Do we have the applicant here? He should be online. So you might need to Yeah, applicant for uh, the annexation. For 4510 Chicago Street, do we have the applicant online? <clears throat> Tell me to wave the hand since we can't hear me. Do you see anybody on there, Rodney? I don't. Stefania, Iremia, the one who told me they would be here, they would be online. <clears throat> and the applicant is not here in person. Okay. Can you show all those that have that are online? They only show nine. Up oh, nine. I like you Zoom. Can I can pull them all up. Yeah. Should we just skip and go back to it, or do we need to continue it, or what we, procedure? So this is um, this is a fairly small one. It's for uh, a single property dividing up into two um, in order to get ability to build on it. Actually, I'm not even sure they're dividing it up. I can't remember. It says it's for access to get city utility services and single build and build a single family home. Yeah, it's just so Rodney. Yeah. Rodney, with that being the case, city utilities are not available to this property. That's so right. I would not recommend proceeding without the applicant present to make sure that we have some clear understanding on what they're doing and, and why. So commissioners, I talked to the applicant about that and um, their purpose was not to connect to utilities. It was because the, the county would not allow them to build a single family home on the property. And so they're requesting annexation to come into the city in order to just build a single family home. So that's the purpose. They, they're well aware that there are not utilities available to the site. Um, but they they just wanted the annexation in order to build the home. But this says in order to get access to yeah. city utility services. So that's that shouldn't. That's correct. Okay. After they submitted their application, I and we oh. wrote that out and submitted it. Um, I called them for clarity, and they they provided that clarification. So Rodney, can you just present it to us then without the applicant, and then we can still go with forward. It's legal to do that. Um, and you could recommend it still on to city council one way or another. Um, but I know it's your policy uh, traditionally to have the applicant here. Uh, and I have documentation of them being notified and saying they would be here, but, uh, or be online, I should say. Well, since this is a public hearing and the notice went out that they wanted to get annexed in order to access city services, I wonder, because that's, that's what's been yeah, that's what's been advertised and notified. So I think maybe Daniel's right that we get clarification and just make sure they know. And I think so too. They right. Should, we should have them here to talk to. So there's no legal requirement right. for that part of it. Um, the purpose behind that in the uh, in the legal posting is um, for clarification for neighbors. Um, but and so since it was clarified that that's not what their intent is. Um, that that still isn't a legal requirement to have that corrected in the legal notice. But uh, again, I did talk with the applicant and and it's fine if if we want to postpone this until they can they can show up to the meeting. That is absolutely fine. Um, but but it, it I did get clarification. from. I think we should wait. I mean, we should do the same for everybody, not pick and choose which one we do what for. Sure. Agreed. That postponement needs a motion. It does. Which table or so it's continued continue. okay. to continue the the uh, um, 
the item until a date certain, and you just need to set that date. But did we have to, in the past, open the public hearing before we continued, Bill? Yes, that's true. Um, and if you don't open the public hearing right now, um, and essentially opening the public hearing is reading the item, and then you can make a motion to continue the public hearing to a date certain. If you don't do that, I have to pay to have it uh, put back in the newspaper again. We don't want to do that. Yeah, you don't get cookies the next time. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the date that you want to have it on? What's the first uh, available next public again. hearing? First so Tuesday the first in one January. is the 12th. Yeah, that would, but there is a lot of items scheduled for the 12th. So what's the one after that then? Well, this is going to be, this, 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 gonna, this is will be a fast one. If they show up, it'll be yeah. fine. All right. It's taking longer to decide whether or not to postpone it than it would yeah. to decide it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it the 12th then. So oh. January 12th, or if you wanted to shoot for the next one, would yeah, be we'll 20, the, 12th. the 26th of January. The 12th. Let's just do the 12th. Okay. So we need to open the public hearing. We need to read, the, need to read it. We need to read the. You just state the item, say that the public hearing is open, okay. and then you get a motion to continue it to a date certain of January 12th. But not close public hearing. Though. Correct. Okay. So, Otherwise, you get it. So, public hearing item number one is annexation and zoning to RS 8.5, single family residential 8,500 square foot lot at 4510 Chicago Street, a 1.42 acre portion of Northeast quarter section 11 in order to get access to city utility services and build one single family home on the property for Mihai and Stefania or Mia or something close to that. Madam Chair, I'll make the motion we continue this public hearing to January 12th, 2021. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's continued to the 12th. <clears throat> All right. Number two, Maple Leaf Town Home. Do we have the applicant here? Come on up and tell us what you want to do and Uh, cool. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Uh, Stephanie Leonard with KM Engineering, representing our client and the developer on the project. My address is 9233 West State, Boise 83714. Um, I do have a presentation. I don't know if we've got it loaded in. I do have a flash drive, if not. Okay, thank you for allowing us to be here with you in person. It's so much easier, I think, to talk and um, be able to communicate that way. Um, this is for a project that's, um, as shown on the screen, the Maple Leaf Townhomes, we're requesting annexation and a preliminary plat into the city of Nampa. Um, if you wouldn't mind going to the next one. Uh, this is located very close to I-84 and um, near Happy Valley Road. Uh, it's approximately 7.8 acres. Uh, located south of Stam, and as I mentioned, it's about 800 feet from Happy Valley Road on uh, to the east. It's currently unincorporated in Canyon County, and we're requesting to annex and zone that into the RP district, which is the Residential Professional District. We're contiguous to property that has been annexed to the north, as you can see there. Um, if you wouldn't mind going back to the last one, I'll just talk for a second, sorry. Uh, there is some property that's zoned uh, and annex into the city to the west, as you can see, the um, RMH, and there's also um, healthcare center and then um, residential further over to the west, too. Thanks for adding the next one. <laughs> uh, so, the future land use map we're uh, proposing to annex into the um, professional residential zone, which is in compliance with community mixed use area. 
as you can see, the little parcel that we've indicated with the red hatch line is kind of in the center of what's a very large community mixed use area on the comp plan. Um, you all just updated the comp plan in March of this year and um, determined that this area was appropriate for this land use since it's so close to the interstate, it's close to other existing services and um, in properties that'll potentially redevelop into other land uses that'll be compliant with the um, community mixed use area. There's a high density residential to the west near Happy Valley Road. And then um, there's also commercial north of the interstate as well as um, west of Garrity Boulevard. The community mixed use land use uh, correlates with the RP zoning district that we're requesting. The target density for that land use is actually up to 27.8 units an acre. We're requesting 13.8 gross dwelling units an acre and uh, 14.32 net dwelling units an acre. Um, some of the principles of the comp plan are being supported by our proposal. We are um, providing residential uses as well as one commercial lot um, to focus on providing community-wide needs and services in the area. Um, we will be a nice complementary uh, addition to this area as the gateway centers directly to the north. Um, it comprises about 60 acres of commercial property that's already pretty developed and has other pads that are available for development. Um, and then as I mentioned, we're located on a major transportation corridor, which is very close to the interstate um, and arterial roadways that will provide easy access and um, make it easy for folks to get to and from the residences that we're proposing, as well as the commercial component. Um, let's see. Um, the staff report does note that the intent of, the, of using the mixed use community designation um, for this area specifically, it's close proximity to the interstate, shopping that exists, transit, and um, in order to make the area walkable, shoppable, livable, and workable. So I think this proposal does just go into that principle. So next slide, thank you. So this is our preliminary plat and landscape plan. We're proposing 96 lots overall. 94 of those are platted as single family residential lots. Four of those are actually the darker gray areas, and those are comprised of um, extra parking for guests and residents of the development. And then we're proposing one common lot, which is the north is facing left. But the common lot is that kind of hatched zone at the right hand side, I don't know, how at the very bottom. And then the commercial lot is at the top, it's that white vacant <laughs> lot up there. The commercial lot's about 30,000 square feet. And then, um, the, the remainder of the lots vary in size. Um, the RP zone allows for 6,000 square feet for the first two units, and then an addition of 1,350 square feet for each additional dwelling unit per building. So we're in compliance with that, and actually our lots are exceeding those requirements. Um, our minimum lot size for the two unit townhomes we're providing are about 6,900 square feet. Our minimum lot size for the three unit townhomes we're providing is uh, 82, 33 square feet. And then the minimum lot size for the four unit townhomes we're providing is 10,100 square feet. So um, on the 90 single family residential lots that we're providing, we're proposing 28 total residential structures that comprise those different um, types of units. Our proposed density, as I mentioned, is 13.88 gross dwelling units an acre and 14.32 dwelling units an acre both of which have, are below the, the maximum target density in this area. We're proposing two access points via STAM, um, and that is through that loop road. So direct access will be through STAM. Um, all of the homes will be accessing via the, the private road that we're proposing. Acer Loop is the name of that. So I guess on, um, we're providing with our open space 5.5 total acres, which is in compliance with code. City staff has requested that we um, change out some of the trees that we'd initially proposed, which we're happy to do. And otherwise, we'll be landscaping in accord with code requirements. So next one, thank you, Abby. Uh, so this is our two-unit townhome that we're proposing, uh, just a, an elevation to kind of give you an idea of the modulation and kind of the different varying um, facades that we're proposing for it. And we've got a three-unit townhome as well, um, same style or similar style, obviously a little bit bigger to accommodate the extra space. Um, and the next one is a four, um, a four unit townhome. We're proposing six of the two unit buildings, uh, 12 of the four unit buildings and 10 of the three plex buildings to make sure to kind of provide a, 
a variety of housing products and square footages for uh, potential buyers. Uh, so I guess um, to conclude, I know we have a fair amount of testimony and I read through all the public testimony and um, understand the concerns and I'll, I'll leave a little bit of time for them to speak. So I'll go to the, my last slide and thank you for listening to our proposal. We're excited about this project. I think it's gonna be a great addition to this part of Nampa, especially given its close proximity to existing development. Um, the interstate is gonna be really easy to access, close to public transit um, and is um, really, it's going to add, I think a lot of, uh, it's going to enhance the area quite a bit. Um, we're in compliance with the comp plan um, and we think this kind of density is going to be appropriate for this area. So um, we're in agreement with the staff report and all the conditions, the recommended conditions of approval. With that, I will stand for any questions you might have. We'll probably have questions for you at the end. Thank Wonderful. you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, staff. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, Christy Watkins, Principal Planner for the City of Nampa. Um, I'll try not to repeat everything Stephanie just said, because I think she took my all my notes. <laughs> She covered it really well. Um, so the request before you this evening is for a recommendation to City Council for the annexation and zoning to RP of the property located at 0, 4921 and 5009 Stam Lane and for the approval of the preliminary plat for the Maple Leaf Townhome subdivision on the same property. The property is currently outside the city limits in Canyon County, but is contiguous to the city limits on the north side. Um, as stated, it's got BC and RMH, multifamily, commercial, uh, senior, senior living, and then county residential all around it. This property is eligible for annexation since it is adjacent to the city limits and the proposed zoning and development plan do conform to the guidelines sent forth in the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive future land use designation is community mixed use, which calls for a development max of 27.8 units per acre. As she stated, the project proposes 13.8 dwelling units per gross acre. The community mixed use district encourages development that is planned to specifically include commercial uses with a focus on providing community wide needs and services and high density residential. As a number of other things are listed here, um, but the high density residential is what we'll be focusing on. Um, the, Chapter 13 of Title 10, which is the Planning and Zoning Code, is the RP standards. Um, they will be applied to these buildings at the time of building permit. The Design Review Code, Chapter 34, is currently going through some changes that will include multifamily dwellings such as these. We anticipate that that will be in place by the time that these buildings come in for permitting, so they will likely be required to go through design review. Um, in your packet, you were also given a list of all the uses that would be allowed or conditionally allowed in the RP zone. So that um, commercial piece at the front could potentially have some of these things in it. Um, the list is not as long as what would be allowed in the neighboring BC zone, and the density of housing allowed is less than what would be conditionally allowed in the BC zone. And just for your information, here's a table of the commercial signage that is also allowed in the RP zone. Um, the RP zones, being that it is residential, is a bit smaller than commercial zones for signage. So that commercial lot will have a smaller sign than the commercial development to the north. So um, among the general purposes of zoning is to promote orderly and systematic development and patterns which preserve and or enhance public health and safety. Um, the code for the RP district states that it is to provide for medium density multiple family area and a desirable mixing of residential land uses with light commercial land uses in possible close proximity to adjacent single family districts. 
The light commercial uses allowed in this district are selected for their compatibility with residential uses. Such a district is typically appropriate along thoroughfares. So consideration for annexing the property is reasonable given that the applicant has a legal interest in the property. The annexation and zoning assignment is legally recognized legislative act. The applicant intends to develop the property. City utility services are available to the property. Emergency services are available to the property. The property abuts city zoned land and matches the future land use designation assigned in the comprehensive plan. Nearby multifamily and commercial land uses in the nearby area suggest that RP zoning would be an acceptable fit for this area. Nampa has determined that it is in the public interest to provide a mix of commercial services and varying residential housing opportunities for its citizens. And the current real estate market is pressing, um, has a pressing need for additional housing and inventory products. As stated in the uh, compass analysis that was included in your packet, the job to housing ratio is 3.5. This number indicates a need for more housing in this area. The nearest police station is 3.2 miles away and the nearest fire station is one mile away. Um, there is no active farmland being consumed by this development. The nearest bus stop is 1.2 miles away. The nearest public park is 2.1 miles away and the nearest grocery store is 0.3 miles away. Um, the Safe House to School analysis states that Columbia High School, East Valley Middle School, and Endeavor Elementary School are all over two miles away and they are not within walking distance of this development. As far as services are concerned, um, utility and emergency services are available to the property. In your packet, there was a quote from Nampa Police from March of this year. It talks about the um, number of officers per thousand residents. I believe you've seen that quote before. We're going to have that when we're talking about developments like these. Um, the preliminary plat itself proposes 94 attached single family lots, which will be contained within 28 structures, one commercial lot and one common lot on 7.81 acres. So the analysis of the plat, um, and she went through the lot sizes already, so I won't bore you with all the numbers. Um, they do exceed the sizes required. The commercial lot would also be required to have a 6,000 square foot lot, but it is proposed at 30,571 square feet. Therefore, the plat is deemed compliant in this regard. Um, engineering will require that 40 feet of right of way be dedicated from the section line in Stam Lane and the traffic impact study indicated that no turn lanes would be required at the access point of this development. Access to this development will be taken from Stan Lane from the internally looped private drive. This project does not propose access onto Orchard Avenue. A landscape plan was submitted and aside from eliminating the use of the ash trees, it appears to be acceptable. Uh, we received public input from multiple neighbors and the summary of their concerns as stated was decreased property value, increased traffic, noise, and crime, misplaced wildlife, loss of the country feeling or character of the neighborhood that will change, no open space and no sidewalks, immediate neighbors need to retain access to the drainage ditch for flood irrigation, um, Questions were, is the, new neighbor, is the neighbor's new septic drain field too close to the newly proposed structures and is there access onto Orchard Street? Um, we also received the standard comments from Nampa Meridian Irrigation District, the Nampa Forester, the GIS Division for street naming, the Fire Department and the Engineering Division. The conditions of approval are listed in your staff report and they include the same items that were previously stated in the analysis and correspondence um, as they pertain to the landscape plan, the street naming, um, the dedica dedication of right of way, frontage improvements, um, on on site wells and septic systems, um, and the standard comments from engineering. So, given the analysis noted, the annexation and zoning to RP is um, an entertainable request, and staff supports a recommendation of approval of this annexation and zoning to City Council and staff supports an approval decision of the preliminary plat for the Maple Leaf Townhome subdivision with all conditions as listed in the staff report. And I will stand for any questions. Christy, I have a couple of questions if I may. This is Steve. 
Um, yes. When was the last traffic study done before or after the Amazon? Um, I have not seen the traffic study. That would be a question for Daniel. Okay, then um, there were quite a few people that were opposed to this application. I counted 17. Is that accurate or has that gone up? No, I think that's accurate. You've received everything I've received. Okay. How often have you seen applications where we had 17 people, neighbors opposed to it? Do you know off the top of your head? Probably the last one I presented to you guys about four years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Daniel, are you on? Can you hear me? I am. I am popping up that I, the traffic information is not in there, so I don't know the date of it. So I'm looking that right now. Okay. Um, I will say that the, with the number of units they are proposing here, um, it does not trigger a full traffic impact study. It requires them to look at the um, turn lanes necessary for the um, for the entrances. Um, Daniel, I was kind of thinking more down the road. Um, I read someplace that a lot of people going to work at Amazon are using STAM rather than crossing the interstate at Garrity. Uh, and so from a typical standpoint, when we have a large shift in traffic um, and vehicular traffic, it typically takes a few months to settle down into what we will actually see um, going forward. And so I, I don't know that even now that if we were to go pull traffic data today, that that would show um, good data on what, what it's actually going to end up as. Um, so that's that's what what I can say to that, um, we have done a number of timing improvements on the Garrity corridor and along Franklin that have improved operations in that area, even with the addition of the Amazon traffic. Um, and we have plans farther down with ITD for modifications there at Garrity and Stam uh, and Happy Valley that that block around the Winco block that will improve that as well. Uh, those, the construction timeline on that, if I remember correctly, is around 2026, though we hope to bring that forward um, with ITD because of the size of the project, we think we'll be able to get that advanced to an earlier year, though that's where it's programmed today. I, I guess, Daniel, what I was thinking about is the situation um, down where um, Best Buy is and, and Costco and uh, when you try and go to like Chick-fil-A on a Saturday or Friday, it's almost impossible. You got to sit five or six lights to get to that place. Are we going to create the same thing here on Stam and Garrett? So, so these, these entrances certainly would never warrant a signal access. No, I realize that, but I'm talking about at the intersections. We already have one at Stam and Garrity, but what about the other direction going towards the orchard? So, so there are there are existing at Stam and Garrity. There are existing issues. Like I say, we're working with ITD on those. Heading towards um, Robinson Road, okay. uh, we've been in discussions. Um, that's not currently in the city's jurisdiction, so we don't have any immediate plans for intersection treatment there. Though we are looking at it from a long-term perspective of what. Um, what we may need going forward, but that's nothing that we have plans for currently. Okay, thank you. Hey, Daniel. Yep. All right, Daniel, this is Jeff. Um, is that STEM road, is that currently wide enough to put a turn lane in at those entrances or would that road have to be widened as is? As um, is 
pull up the map there, um, where it, the, the analysis did not show a warrant for those. Uh, right. The developer would not, generally speaking, be required to put those in. The, the property to the north, the, the Gateway Center, they did do widening when they installed their um, frontage. With the changes that have happened um, to our roadway requirements, um, without further widening, it doesn't appear that there is adequate room there to put in turn lanes without additional widening. Okay. Hey, Daniel, this is Tom. I've got a question for you. Yep. Um, is there any timeline on putting in a left turn lane southbound on Happy Valley? If this project goes through at, at Stam, yeah, Happy Valley and Stam heading south. So there, there have been some discussions on that because of the skews we have with the intersection there. Um, the city does have some money in this fiscal year. There's a proposed potential development at the corner at Stam and Happy Valley. Um, that if that were to go, we've plugged in some money to to do some intersection improvements there that would uh, straighten up those uh, skews on the northbound Happy Valley as you go through the intersection and likely uh, add pavement for a, a left-hand turn lane to the south. Um, though we don't have drawings or anything for that, though there is some money in the budget to do some improvements there this year if that development adjacent to it were to happen. Okay, thanks. Christy? Yes. This is Matt. D Daniel just referenced that project down at the corner, the, what is it, the southeast corner of Stam and Happy Valley? Yes. What is the status of that? Did, is that approved or? I believe, I wanna say they're in for building permits. Or they're getting ready to submit for building permits because their ordin their um, annexation just recorded. What was the size of that project? Do you remember how many like units or what 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 was that? Were they apartments, ten homes? Don't remember off the top of my head. I could look that up and get back to you. <clears throat> yeah, that might be applicable. I'd like to know. Okay. And is to that project is this is Jeff? Is that project? Is the entrance off of Stam and Happy Valley, or is it just off of Stam or the other? Is that, I believe that's... it's just off of Happy Valley. Stam, okay. if I can remember right. I will look that one up. <clears throat> Thanks, Christy. Take me a minute. So if anyone has any other questions, go right ahead and ask them. I'm not bored waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no pressure, right? Yeah. We'll no start pressure. the Jeopardy music now. <laughs> go ahead with the public hearing while she's doing it. We can ask her at the end. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Justify. All right. So this list that you gave me are is for this item, correct? All right. So I have a sign up sheet here, and not everybody on here said they wanted to testify. But I'm going to go through this sheet. Um, Patrick Anderson, are you online and wanting to testify? Or here in person? Okay. I'm assuming it, it doesn't say if well, they're lettering. Uh, so, so some of them have signed up, but they didn't sign up to speak. Right. So we didn't send them. Right, but if they don't say for, against, or these are all, I'm assuming, well, opposed. I, Madam Chair, Patrick Anderson did sign up, and he was in opposition. Right. Sent a letter. Mm -hmm. Right. So and, maybe he decided not to speak as well. Right. I, don't know. I just give am giving him the chance, okay. just like we do if they were in person. Right. Okay, we also have Charles Booz, who is um, on here. Uh, Opposed. And then we have, oh, I'm going to. 
Yeah. Lindia yeah. and Vioral Botos, who are opposed. Kristen and Dennis Karp. Okay, so the first person that wanted to speak are David and Pamela Corisis. I'm hoping I'm not butchering your name. Are you guys online? Yes. Awesome. Go ahead and give us your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes to give us your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, for being here and doing all you are doing for our community. Uh, my name is Pamela Caristis. I live at 4903 Stam Lane. Uh, my husband and I moved to Napa from Meridian over 20 years ago. We raised our family here and look forward to retiring here. We've always supported our community financially and through volunteerism. We really do enjoy Napa and we take full pride in our neighborhood and want to protect and improve it. So as you can understand our genuine concern when we saw this proposal, uh, I think I sent in a couple of maps for display. I I can't see your screen, so I don't know if you have it on or up. He's working on it. Hold Thank on, you. I, will, I, I have them running. Oh, okay. I'm going to delay my search for just a second. <laughs> I've got them easy, too. No, I don't think you have this one. Okay. Okay, they are up. Oh, yeah? No. No. You can't see that? Nope. Nope. No. Uh, try it again. Where oh, my goodness. There we go. That? Yes. Hmm? Okay. All right. Your pictures are up. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for accepting those. It, at a later time, I kind of ignorant when it comes to computer stuff. So as you can see, uh, the middle section in red, if you see the color part there, with that development going right in the middle of, of uh, other property, which are at least just under an acre, up to three acres or more. The proposal, I, I think, clearly does not fit the area. This development would directly impact our way of life and those around us, and it does nothing to enhance the value of the area or our properties. And I'm glad that you brought up the traffic concern. I think due to Amazon's fulfillment center, there has been a large increase of traffic along Stam Lane already. And with the development of townhomes on the corner of Happy Valley and Stam, um, which is in development and has been approved, it's safe to say that there's going to be even more of an increase, especially when the pandemic ends. Uh, but there definitely needs to be another traffic study done. 10 seconds. Thank you. Uh, I I worry. I think there's there's no sidewalks or crosswalks. Uh, again, that the irrigation and the drainage ditch. I know uh, the majority of the neighbors here around here use it. Uh, and I I won't. I think if you approve this, I would really like to see the minimum step back to 20 feet along the property line. Right now, the setbacks are eight feet from my property line from the back of my yard. I'd like to see less townhomes per acres, maybe a minimum of six, greater enhanced landscaping and possibly keeping existing trees. They're healthy, they're strong, they're, they're full grown. I'd like to see a higher, sturdier fence, um, noise Pam, reduction, landscaping, okay. That's your time. I'm sorry. I appreciate it. Um, thank we you have, very much. We have you on the record, and we'll talk to the applicant again before we um, finish up tonight. I appreciate thank, it. Thank you. Thanks. 
Okay, also not asking to speak, but wanted to be on the record. Um, David and Maria Fiddler, Richard Harris, Kathy and Tony Henshaw, Danielle and Chelsea Johnson. So we, we would, sorry, we would like to speak if we could. This is Daniel Johnson. Okay, go ahead and give us your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Okay, uh, Daniel Johnson, and we live at 5104 East Orchard. Okay. We, um, we are on the southeast corner of this proposed development. Um, we have an acre here with a small house on it. Um, We've lived here about four years, uh, myself and my wife and our old yellow lab. And uh, we just, we really love this place. And I think that uh, if you look at the entire area between Happy Valley and Pitt, and then between Stam and Orchard, and really study the properties there, what you'll find is with the exception of some of the new development on Happy Valley, that all of these properties are three quarters of an acre and up. Um, most of them are already developed. So there's just a few remaining pieces here, um, including the one in question that would be available for this type of development. So I would argue that based on what is already here, um, it would just be a real deficit to the existing uh, properties and to those of us that live here. Uh, you know, we've all got a little bit of space, and I know that there's there's a lot of people that really enjoy living in the area. And I think that the proposed density is quite a bit out of line uh, just for the surrounding area. So we're obviously concerned about the noise and the traffic and, and all of those issues. Uh, but I would argue that overall, it just really isn't a good fit for this spot. Uh, so we sure appreciate you hearing our comments and concerns about it. I would ask that um, maybe you would consider if this were to be approved, uh, looking at you know some much larger setbacks, like some other folks have suggested. Um, we would like to see some trees along the bordering properties. So looking at the landscape plans for the proposed development, it appears that all of the uh, landscaping is on the interior of that project. So on the exterior behind these proposed townhomes, we would just have eight feet of maybe grass or gravel and then our fence line. And uh, I think that maybe we could make some compromise and do a lot better on that if this were to go through. We will sure ask the applicant. Okay, well, I really appreciate your time and I'm gonna let you get to somebody else. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we have, oh my goodness, I'm gonna try not to <laughs> share this name. Um, Nadia. Nadia, okay. <laughs> give us your name and address for the record and give us um, what you want to tell us, I guess. Hi, my name is Nadia Kraftchuk and I reside at 906 North 52nd Street. And I am here to express my strong opposition to this project. Um, my husband and I own our home on a private street adjacent to the proposed project. We live on 1.37 acres with our chickens and our dog. Um, so it came quite as a surprise to my family and extended family and neighbors to recently hear about this proposed 96 town home unit project for this very private country feel space. Um, we bought our house in 2013 and I've been commuting every day down Stem Lane to the St. Al's Garrity Family Practice Clinic where I work as a family nurse practitioner. Um, one of our primary concerns is the heavy traffic as it stands now on Stem Lane. I have witnessed numerous accidents both on Stam and Robinson Road um, as well as Stam and um, Happy Valley intersections over the years. Adding townhomes would create a very dense population on an already very short street. Um, we have a difficult time leaving or turning into our private street onto Tam Lane as it is. I can't imagine the bottleneck that this project will create from both Robinson and Happy Valley. Um, also being close proximity to I-84 as um, they had uh, mentioned, we see a lot of traffic um, from folks trying to take shortcuts. Um, I'd like to bring to your attention that the commercial gateway properties across Tam Lane have multiple entrances and exits 
while this proposed project only has two exit points onto the same side of the street. Um, we also have concerns regarding the fire hazard the structure would impose. As you know, we have very dry summers with a lot of dry grass in the surrounding area. With our houses so close to the townhomes, it is of great concern that a fire would be literal devastation to the homes and structures in the area. As a healthcare provider, I'm not immune to the fact that many folks use tobacco or blast fireworks or fingers for baby showers, holidays, etc. So adding 96 townhomes to this country area feel area, sorry, only heightens that concerns tenfold. Um, on the flip side, the fire hazard would also come from recreational burning, including fire pits, as well as outdoor burning permits, which all impose a great hazard on the surrounding homes and structures. And finally, from a provider standpoint, uh, standpoint my other concerns is the lack of playground or backyard for children to play in. To think that these 96 units will not have children is not reasonable or likely. Um, there is no safe play area right outside their door, and there is no sidewalk on STEM lane to allow them to safely play. And I can see them crossing the street trying to play in the gateway area. So those are my concerns I'd like to add to the ones that our neighbors have also expressed, which I agree with as well. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Okay. I found that if you're ready for that information. Go ahead, Christy. Okay. Um, so I don't have anything formal submitted. It looks like he's probably going to subdivide the property, um, and I haven't seen any application in for that yet. So it is 3.53 acres with both of those corner properties combined. He's, I think, proposing to separate it into eight lots. Um, that would be four fiveplexes and four sixplexes for a total of 44 dwelling units. Did you get the the egress entrance and egress to to that property? I don't have a site plan for it. He hasn't okay. provided me with that. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Christy, is that approved? What they're doing, or are they do they're going farther with the project now? So um, when you guys agreed to, or sorry, recommended approval for annexation, he had not provided a concept plan at that time because he hadn't determined the layout based on the utility capacity yet. Um, so it got approved for annexation and um, up to this point, he's he was waiting for that annexation to record before he pulled any kind of permits. And so until he pulls an actual permit, I I don't have anything really to look at. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. That's all I know. Okay. Next on our list is Mikhail and Lana Kuzminko is opposed. They didn't wish to sign up. Rick Lane also. And then to sign up, we have Ken and Bunny March would like to speak. Oh, you guys are here live and in person. Yay. Okay. Come on up. Give us your name and address for the record. And Hi, I'm Ken Marge, and I live at uh, 907 North 52nd Street in Nampa there. It's just to the east of this property. So uh, forgive me. I'm a little nervous. So I do have a slide. Um, so it's, yeah, I don't know if you can make it any bigger. That's a little hard to see, but anyway, uh, I'll get to that in just a moment. I'd like to say that I'm opposed to this uh, redistricting of the land to residential professional and especially to the high density residential plan, including the 94 lots for the townhouse complex is being proposed at this site. <clears throat> uh, currently, there's one of the largest, if not the largest mobile home park in the city of Napa. Uh, that is the Happy Valley Mobile Home Park off of uh, Stam and Garrity. Next to that is another large apartment complex called The Station, and it has uh, 256 units. Uh, these are highlighted in yellow on that uh, map there, both of those combined. Additionally, across the street from these apartments on the corner of Stam and Happy Valley was uh, uh, approved this past spring for multifamily residential use. I think you guys were speaking of that earlier. Yep. Um, I thought I saw somewhere in maybe the city council notes it was going to be uh, 
you know, maybe some apartment complexes also. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, that's what I thought they were going to be. Um, so now we're looking at another large complex just blocks away from that. Uh, recently approved plot and just two blocks away from the large complex, the station uh, apartments and the Happy Valley mobile home park. Um, I understand this is a mixed use area and the mobile home park and the station apartments make sense as well as the corner lot on Stam and Happy Valley, that recent approval. Um, however, I think the lot in question does not make sense. So if you can change some slides, I have some pictures of the surrounding area. Um, kind of hard to see. That's the uh, lot in question. So you can continue to cycle through the rest of them if you'd like to while I speak. Um, the lot in question is surrounded by large lots large homes with many different types of farm animals being raised. Uh, the larger surrounding area is also of the same way on fill, so the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, to me, it makes little sense to add yet another high density apartment complex right in the middle of this type of a uh, setting. Uh, the surrounding laws are not going to change nor be subdivided from where they are now. So 15 seconds. Uh, we, we already have the Gateway Center, Winco, the hospital, and other shops. There's already high density housing in existence with another one being proposed very soon. We have a mixed use area already. Uh, why don't we consider the area to be open to uh, smaller single family homes of the order of half acre lots or, or acre lots, something substantially uh, smaller than what's being proposed. This would be a better transition to the immediate area and nearby surroundings. Um, I ask that you please, before you make your decision, maybe drive around the neighborhoods, get a feel for how we live, and imagine yourself living there and raising your family as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, thank you for being here and giving us a, the opportunity to, to speak. I. Did not sign up. I did not know I was going to talk, but I'm but I'm I'm happy that I'm going to be talking. Um, so your name and address for the record. My name is Benny March. My address 907 North 52nd Street, Napa, Idaho. So um, I just want to let you know that when my husband and I we when we moved back to Napa, we had chosen to live out in a country area. It was we intentionally not wanted to move into a, a huge neighborhood, and so we were ecstatic when we saw this area. So we moved into it, and we love this area. The people that we live with, um, it's it's great, and it's awesome to see these families that they have pasture, and they have horses, and they have cows, and they have chickens, and it's just really neat to see. And um, so, and I guess, and then my, I guess my main question is, why do they want 94 units? I mean, if you went out, we we I I would really like for each one of you guys to take it. Well, actually, first of all, take a drive, start from Boise around 4, 4.30, and see if you can make it to Napa within 45 minutes. I guarantee you won't be able to, because the off-ramp off to Garrity, it actually is backed up by about Black Cat, sometimes even further around that time, for I personally drive it. So then finally, when you get on to Garrity, when you, when you, Get off the off ramp. You make a left to go to Garrett. You have to be very, very careful because it is just back to back. You got Walmart that's over there too, and it is just horrendous to try to even. And then when you're going to add on to the Amazon, could you imagine the traffic? And so, um, so again, kind of leaning this a little bit, um. So I, I guess, and when you talk about, so watching it, and she was stating the two entry and the exits out to Stam. Now we live right off of our street, 52nd Street. You have to go back, you have to get onto Stam in order to a left or a right. When I leave work, I sit there and I wait. And then I also have two kids that live with me that I'm also very concerned of if the, the traffic is going to be horrendous, when you add 94 units, think of that, think of that. When you have 94 units, 
And then you've got to double that with two people, at least a mom and a dad living this two more cars, times 94. Then you want to add on to maybe they have teenagers that add on another two. You think of how many people are going to be leaving this area. 10 seconds. At, thank you. At 8 o'clock. And then when you come home, I mean, it already takes me 40 minutes to go from Black Cat to my home. It's going to extend that time. And you, I can talk about all that I want, but the safety of it, of my kids, it's very concerning. So before you guys even consider it, please take a drive. Look at it. This area is not big enough for, for 94 units. I suggest with my husband, put in some single-family homes in there that has some acreage. Keep it the country feel. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next uh, on the list that did not choose to speak, um, Rose and Joe McKinney, Vlad and Mara Radion, Kimberly and Darren Rump, and Malia Smith are all on here. The next person signed up to speak is Richard and Deanna Spracklin. Hi there. I'm via Teams online. I'm Deanna Spracklin. My husband and I, we live at 5009 East Orchard Avenue in Nampa. So our property isn't actually touching Hi. the business site, but we're definitely in the neighborhood. So <laughs> this is Lydia and our other daughter, Hannah. And Hannah actually has been born since we've been here. And part of our desire in moving to this area, just like so many of our neighbors have shared, is the country feel, you know, we go for a walk on Orchard Avenue and say hi to the goats, um, see the baby goats when they're born and say hi to them, have waved at our neighbor's cow many times. So uh, we just have the same fear that all of our neighbors have expressed already that with um, the building of these townhomes, the, the area will change and there won't be the welcoming of uh, the rural life that we celebrate here and maybe even a changing of the zoning of our area in the future Hi. that would prevent us from having the livestock that we Mom. want. And so we would just echo our neighbors in saying that Hi. we would love to have larger lots for um, single dwelling homes. So thank Hi. you very much. Hi. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's everybody that's on my sheet here. Madam Chair, I'm, I think some of these will have um, already spoken, but I will show you the list, hopefully, of people who have signed up here at the, at the council chambers. Oh. Stephanie Leonard. Not on my list. Tiffany? The applicant. Oh, that's the applicant. Uh, okay. Oh, hey. sorry. <laughs> it's already been so long, we forgot. <laughs> We're just Don, making sure. Don Newell. Nope. All three of them are applicants, it looks like. Okay. Matt. Drown. Okay. Ken March and Bunny March, all both spoke. Yep. So, is there anyone that's online via Teams that would like to speak on this matter? Leave your arms, and whatever. Okay. All right. Let's get the applicant um, back up here to ask some questions. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Um, Stephanie Leonard, 9233 West State, Boise 3714. I uh, did my best to quickly write down all the comments, and I did read the comments as well that were included with the packet. So I think I, I understand generally what the um, concern is and um, have I understand completely where everyone's coming from as far as the change that's happening in this area. It's always 
it's challenging with infill, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, this is a site that, although it seems rural and it is, for the most part, has been undeveloped for decades, um, is an area that the city is actually programmed to change and to comply with um, something along these lines as far as the density and the commercial component that we're providing. Um, if this project or if this um, this property was adjacent directly to the, the property that you folks were talking about earlier that Christy looked up, it wouldn't probably be as heavily opposed because it would be maybe more of a transition. But uh, since it's a couple properties over, it just makes it seem a little bit less congruous to what folks are used to in the area. So um, that being said, I, you know, we're, we understand the concerns and um, are, are here to try to um, alleviate any thoughts that it may not be as complementary to their existing homes as we can. Um, so I guess in regard, I'll try to kind of go through the ones that I made notes on and see if I can focus on those. Um, as far as, let's see, David and Pamela had mentioned that they wanted to see less townhomes. We, we specifically designed this plot with, I, I mistakenly put in the, in the application that it was 94. It's actually 90 lots, 28 buildings that are comprised of different units. So the reason that we came up with two, three, and four unit townhomes is to try to become a little bit less dense feeling while also providing the housing that Nampa so badly needs. Um, and to also kind of look like it's more of a single family type of home and not as broken up with um, space in between the buildings and, and such. Uh, we are providing a six foot vinyl fence on the perimeter of the site. Um, which will provide a little bit of privacy and some obstruction for um, the homes that we're planning there. Uh, let's see. The usually with infill properties, um, I can't I can't speak to property values or how that's going to impact their homes or what their property value is. But I think that um, most real estate agents find that development does kind of increase the value of areas, especially. Um, Areas that are adjacent to commercial and um, industrial and um, transit corridors. Let's see. The trees and landscaping that currently exists there, um, I believe the city probably has an arborist that we'll need to work with to make sure that those trees are healthy. And if they are, we'll need to either mitigate them or retain them. I'm not totally familiar with the city's landscaping ordinance, but that's usually how that would work. Um, we are providing landscaping in accord with city code requirements. And so um, aside from changing out some of the trees that we'd initially proposed, we're, we're in compliance with that. These lots and homes will be individually owned. So they are going to be private property where people can plant what they'd like. And um, if they so choose to have trees in their backyard, they'd be able to. Um, and uh, let's see. What about a playground? We don't have a playground planned right now. We do have um, an open space lot that's on the south part of the site, and I, I can't recall how large it is, but um, there are sidewalks we're going to be uh, providing as well on the interior that folks could go and play soccer there or um, recreate there, and as well as in their backyards. Um, I've, I've heard that tot lots aren't as heavily used as maybe they once were, and folks like active uh, recreation more, but I, it might be just based on Hearsay. So I'm sorry, on that note, so each one of these townhomes will have a grass area, backyard, whether they put grass in or not. Yes, they yeah, they'll have, I believe we have 10 feet set back for the rears. So okay. um, these are, I mean, these are pretty low maintenance sure. homes Small. and a lot of folks don't like to maintain lawns and, and prefer kind of a little bit less as far as that's concerned, but there will be space for private um, recreation and hanging out. Will they all be individually fenced, each unit? I'm not sure on that answer. Okay. Um, Follow up that I think that would probably be up to the, the internal owners. property owners, but okay. yeah, I don't, I'm not sure on that. I was going to ask what kind of fencing were you going to have, but apparently you're not going to have any. It's up to the property owners to put a fence in or not. Well, Madam Chair, sorry, Commissioner Kehoe, we are having, we're going to install six foot vinyl fencing on the perimeter of the site. So on all three sides. It's just the individual lots that oh. we are not going to be mm -hmm. providing fencing. But between the neighbors and your development, there will be a six-foot vinyl fence. Correct. Okay. Uh, let's see. In regard to um, the surrounding lots and their existing character, 
I know it's really difficult for folks that live in rural areas like this that are beautiful and have been there for a long time to um, recognize that at some point they could potentially redevelop. Um, this area has been programmed specifically by the city to redevelop as the mixed use, um, land use, and in, in the staff report and in the documents for the comp plan, they do speak of how land use will eventually kind of go this route or with commercial and office uses. So although it's um, at this point maybe not as developed as it may be in the future, um, it's, a, it's a possibility and projects like this are in compliance with that plan. Uh, as far as the traffic concerns, we did complete a traffic impact analysis uh, that Daniel was mentioning, and that was in September of this year. Um, we did take into account, or our traffic engineer took into account COVID and um, extrapolated those numbers by 50%. So they did account for more traffic, um, but I guess uh, in the same vein that he mentioned, I don't know that we would be able to capture all the traffic that's existing from, from Amazon or other developments that have occurred recently. Uh, safety of um, kids in the area, I think, you know, we're all concerned about children and to make sure that they are not only staying in property in areas, not in roadways, and making sure that they're traveling safe. Um, we're going to be providing sidewalks in the internal part of our subdivision, and then um, we will be provided or will be required to improve Stam Lane and, and dedicate 40 feet of right away there. So um, that will hopefully help with that a little bit. Um, I think there was a comment too from Richard and Deanna most recently that they were afraid that um, they may be required to zone into the city of Nampa. And that's not something that this application would impact for them. But uh, my understanding is that they're on septic and well, if those were to fail in the future, they would have the opportunity to join the city and um, that would be maybe a future thing for them, but um, this application doesn't impact that for them. So I think that I hopefully captured most things. I kind of um, noted when things were duplicates, but uh, you know, we really, I really appreciate being here tonight to be able to talk to you about this project. I think it'll be a great addition, and I really appreciate all of the neighbors' comments. We did try to meet with Chelsea and um, her husband, and we're unable to actually speak with them, but it's. It's important, I, we think, to you know consider what the community wants, but also what the, the larger city wants too. So okay. um, yeah, with that, I guess I'll stand for any questions you may have. Does anybody else have any questions for Stephanie? I have a question. Um, what's the target price point for each unit? Do you know that? Madam Chair, Commissioner Van Ocker, I, I don't actually know what they're, what they're targeting there, and I don't know that they know either. <laughs> I think it'll probably be determined on the market when they actually come up for sale. Okay. And will this project be managed by like an HOA or a management company said individual ownership, but it, will there be a homeowners association um, for the subdivision? Madam Chair, Commissioner Van Ocker, yes, there will be an HOA. It's okay. required by city code, I believe. Stephanie, I had a question, another question if I may. Um, mentioning the, the price of the units, if these are going to be owned by the people that live in them, and if you were in a fourplex, would you own one fourth of the building or how is that going to work? Madam Chair, Commissioner Kehoe, I, you could, I mean, it's a possibility. It's if it's a fourplex on its own individual lot, you could potentially own that individual unit. I don't you know what- to rent to the other three people? Is that what you're saying? No. Well, I don't, I guess it would depend on the owner and whoever actually owned the property. I don't know that we have anything set into place, but hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, they are individually owned. It just would depend on how they want to manage their, their property. So I could buy one unit and then sublet them or rent them out to other people. No, no, you can buy one unit. You can buy one unit. You can buy, buy four. And you can buy four. Yeah, three renters if you want. A whole, you can buy, you can have, no. buy the whole building you or just one of unit. Them if you right. wanted them. Any other questions for Stephanie? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I would entertain a motion to close public hearing. So move. Second. So we give Matt the credit for the motion and Brett the second. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> He's I'm, on this side. I haven't heard from these guys for a while. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, public hearing is closed. Well, I, mean, I, have, a, I have a question for you and, and maybe clarification for those who are listening. Um, it's come up in public hearing quite a bit about, um, we moved here 20 years ago, we moved here and wanted the country feel and so on and so on. So my question and more, I guess, education is, the comprehensive plan, future land use process, how does that work in the city? Is it there for public comment? Do they have the opportunity? Do they know what's coming? Kind of get where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, Madam Chair and, and commissioners, yes. Um, be happy to speak on that. Uh, I, I worked on the 2035 comprehensive plan, um, led that effort. It was the most uh, public involvement we'd ever had in a plan for the city of Nampa ever. Um, this latest one, 2040, increased that uh, public participation. So we had multiple workshops. We had uh, mm -hmm. committees uh, of residents who came out and spoke. We included uh, county residents. We, we tried to include as many people as possible. But when it does come down to it, you have to decide, you know, you have to pick areas and say, okay, where is it? likely to occur, where is growth likely to occur, and what what kind of development would we like to have? Um, Commissioner Kehoe was on that 2035 uh, comprehensive plan committee as well. Uh, I, again, maybe Commissioner, you could speak up to that, but it was significant. We, we reached out as much as we could uh, to involve as many agencies and the public uh, in that process. And we spent many, many months doing that. It wasn't mm -hmm. just one yeah. weekend or something. No, it was a long So time. during that process, this is done every five years. We try to do it every try to, five it, years. Try to do it every five years. And then it goes to the public. Obviously, they have opportunity for, for public comment. There's hearings. There's input. There's, I, I guess, you know, I, I totally understand where a lot of the, these folks are coming from who live in that area. Um, but we, this, this is how cities operate. This is why this is opportunity for public comment as far as our comprehensive land use, our future land use, where we're going to grow, especially in an area that's right there close to an intersection or an interstate. Um, you know, it's something that we got to look at if you decide where you where you're gonna where you're gonna put your roots down. I guess. Yeah, Madam Chair and Commissioner Kirkman, that, that's exactly right. Um, it's you know, I I don't know that there's a perfect scenario where we can pick the higher density residential or commercial development. Um, we we do the best we can. We look at the soils. We look at the um, the the transportation in the area. We look at the existing land uses. We look at utilities and where those utilities can go. It's a complex, really thorough look at our city, and it's challenging, but. In the end, we have to designate areas that are going to accommodate the growth that's coming to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Can we see the motion back up on the screen, Chris? <clears throat> Please. While he's doing that, I, I have to admit that I had a lot of mixed emotions um for and against and i vacillated between the two in the last four or five days when i read the applications um it, it's a tough decision for us to make it's not easy to do but you have to kind of look at the overall picture and some people are going to be put out by it some people are going to be pleased with it um but you know it's just we do the best we can one of the things that i think about is and one of the comments that we get a lot is about traffic and yeah um me too and and you look at where they're putting this place there you want to see the residences as close to they can to work centers to mitigate traffic um and so when you bring in 94 units or whatever it is and you're going to put them here you're trying to put them in places where they'll be close to work centers so people can live there and especially the type of housing product that we're talking about um and so to me, yeah, there, there's a lot of traffic there, but this is a good way to try and mitigate that is to get people close to their jobs. And you've got AutoVol, you've got Amazon, you've got the Cheese Factory, you got Walmart, you got Winco, you got a lot of jobs right there. Plus, 
right across the street is the Gateway Center, yeah, where the there's Gateway more Center jobs there. So because I think I think it makes sense to try and get the people close to their work yep. so that they don't congest the traffic. I agree. Um, and and those types of jobs can't afford a one acre lot with a large custom home or a, right. or a larger. I mean, we have a definite shortage of um, affordable housing, and not not the subsidized affordable housing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about um, a single family new Corey Barton home in Nampa that's selling for three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand um, dollars. Somebody that makes minimum wage or a little bit over that at one of those facilities can't afford that that home, and it's a need. And it's an opportunity to get people into fee simple ownership on something that will appreciate in value over time. So mm -hmm. I agree with you all and Commissioner Kehoe, and I've gone back and forth on this one as I've read through the staff report and the testimony. And, um, you know, it is a very tough decision. And, um, you know, the comprehensive plan isn't a set in stone document. We can, um, make decisions based on based on what the uh, what the situation is, but I I'm in support of this project. Madam Chair, yes, I kind of I'm leaning I'm way off the other side of the spectrum from everybody else. I I, I get we need the some housing that people that are making a, a an average income can afford. Not like the CBHs and stuff that are starting at two, three fifty, four hundred, but but not in this location. I mean, if we were looking at six thousand square foot lots or smaller, where you know your seven, eight, eight homes to an acre, it makes a little more sense. But there's nothing in there in that whole area that's under three quarters of an acre, and you're going to plop this down right in the middle of it. It just doesn't fit with what the rest of that is over there, and you've got eight properties that are going to be sandwiched between this one and the new one going in at the corner is Stam and Happy Valley along with the medical facility. Eight properties in there that are just going to be devastated by being sandwiched in the middle of this as well as the rest of them in that area. Those are those are little mini farms, little mini ranches. People want their space. That's why they bought there. They didn't buy out in the county, you know, in Melba or, or Notice or any place else. They want to be close to the, the facilities but they want their space and you're going to plop down 90 plus residents, right? It, it doesn't fit in this location. If, like I say, if it was more of a high density area with, you know, five, 6,000 square foot lots. Okay. I can see it, but not when you're talking three quarter acre lots and more, it just does not fit. So I'm opposed to it. Thank you, Tom. So what do you guys want to do? I was waiting for someone else to make a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we uh, recommend to City Council approval of the annexation and zoning to RP zoning district and subdivision plat preliminary approval for Maple Leaf townhomes at 4921 and 5009 Stam Lane for 9090. Correct, not 94. 90 single family residential buildable lots, one commercial buildable lot, and one common lot. For 90 townhomes with a okay. growth density of. What? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just, <laughs> sorry to All right, I'll hurry up. Okay. Um, <laughs> for um, Landmark Pacific Development Incorporated, representing William and Linda Larson, with all the conditions of staff. We'll Yay. split the motion into two. Christy, did you hear that? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, we don't necessarily have to because okay. the preliminary plat approval would be contingent upon the approval of the annexation to City Council. Yep. Yeah. So the motion stands, Michelle. 
great. I take like a okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All righty. That will go on to council. So if any of you guys disagree with our decision to recommend to council, you can go to city council meeting and you'll get a chance to have your voice heard again there. So watch for the for the public notice. To recommend recommended approval to the city council. Okay, public hearing item number three. All righty. Do we have um, Patrick Wolf here? All righty. To come on up and give us your name and address for the record and tell us what you want to do. I feel like you're going to have to wake you up or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was interesting. I, uh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> And you learn a lot in here this one as well. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Pat Wolf. Um, I'm the managing partner with my son in Wolf Building Development. We purchased uh, a two acre lot on uh, off North 44th um, back in March. And with the understanding and with the documents that it had previously been approved uh, that it's a two acre, 2.02 .02 acres. It was previously approved by planning zoning and I believe the council um, back in December of 19. So um, it was approved for, I believe 50, 50 potential townhouses going in there. Um, we purchased it and we want to put in seven fourplexes, um, which is substantially less than what the original was. Um, we're planning on um, putting in um, a fence, a final fence around. Uh, we've talked with the neighbor. It had a, or it has, a uh, shared well agreement and a shared well with uh, Mrs. Dreyer, the, our neighbor on 620, 600 North 44. Um, she's gone ahead and annexed her property in and we purchased or paid for to have her uh, tie into the city water so that she has um, that wells an older well. Um, we can't, of course, use it with our development. So we went ahead and, and uh, have paid for that. The city's tapped already and probably this next week we'll go ahead and finish up and get her tied in on to the, to the city water. I think it's an uh, attribute to her property and uh, mm -hmm. with the fence going around, there would be some separation there as well. So you said that was at 600. Sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry. Yes. You said it was 600. Okay. Yeah. Just south of us. Yeah. Our project. Got it. There. Thank you. Um, all the utilities are either in the street or on the property, except for the irrigation. And we're planning on pulling the, the pressurized irrigation from Happy Valley up to and through our property uh, to 44th Avenue. Um, like I said, there's seven fourplexes. Uh, we do have an HOA. We're going to have an HOA, and also we're selling uh, the fourplexes uh, individually as an investment. So if any of you are interested, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't make, we don't make enough to buy one of those. <laughs> we oh, can't yeah, buy no, you can. You can. They pay for themselves. They really do. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we do have an HOA and. Uh, there's going to be eight lots. One of its part of the HOA is going to be for the parking and, and, and additional turnaround for the fire department um, back in there also. So uh, we've got some funds that we're going to be, the city requires us to put um, wide and 44th along our section of the, of the property, I think around 250 feet, and there'll be curb and gutter there. We do have some really nice large trees there that uh, have been designated to come out and I think they're going to have to kind of, mm -hmm. I don't like that. I like to keep them beautiful monarchs there, but uh, I'm afraid once we get the, the uh, curb and gutter and the sidewalk and all that, and we're going to get in the tree roots and they're going to fall on our building. If it's our window, <laughs> so. so they're going to have to come out, which is a shame, but we do have a landscape plan to replace the trees going in there and, and around the perimeter. So I think it's going to be a real attribute to the, to the area. And we hope that uh, you'll approve it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right.
right. Madam Chair, uh, for the record, Rodney Ashby, Director of Planning and Zoning. Um, the applicant has stated uh, the project description. It's proposing seven fourplexes, uh, comprising 28 total dwelling units and one common lot in an RMH zone on just over two acres at 622 North 44th Street. The comprehensive plan designates this area as uh, high density residential. You can see it on the screen there. Um, it is zone uh, RMH or multiple family residential. And uh, the planning and zoning history is on December 16th, 2019. This property came in and was approved for annexation and zoning to the RMH um, with the proposed concept for these, these uh, fourplexes. Um, surrounding land uses to the north is Happy Valley Mobile Home Park. To the northeast is the station apartments at Gateway. Um, we had a discussion just uh, the previous application about these uh, uh, these apartments here, and then of course the, the mobile home park uh, surrounding this this project. Uh, to the south is just rural residential unincorporated, and to the west is Happy Valley Mobile Home Park. A little closer view there. Aerial. These are those two that we had uh, questions about right off of Stam Lane and Happy Valley. <clears throat> so utilities are available near the site. Uh, transportation access is from 44th Street uh, through a common uh, driveway. And about those details. Here's a, a view of the plat, and here's that turnabout, as he was mentioning, for the fire department. Here's the landscape plan. It complies with our city code. Um, the building height is two story, and that would comply with city code. Uh, property area width and yard requirements. The plat complies with property area width and yard requirements. Access and parking, I've already mentioned, the access is off of 44th Street and there is significant amount of, of parking that meets our code. Uh, subdivision short plat, the Wolfpack subdivision is for seven buildable lots and complies with the regulations for a short plat. So uh, several items of uh, communication from our engineering department, that's in your staff report. I'm happy to go over these, but um, just let me know if you have any questions about them. Like I said, they're in your staff report. And Dan is online as well. Building department um, indicated that the structure will encroach into the required 10 foot property line setback. The applicant will need to relocate the structures or provide appropriate fire rating for exterior walls at the time of the plan submittal. The applicant developer shall comply with all building regulations in Title IV. Um, we communicated with the applicant about this and their designer, and the applicant has indicated that the drawings that they were referring to, the construction drawings, were showing a patio, um, and that was sidewalk or, or concrete, and not the line wasn't showing where the building was going. So that 10-foot setback, the structure is out of that 10-foot setback. Okay. Um, and so they are clarifying that with the building department no concern. So the patio was within, but not the structure itself. Yep. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with this one. Uh, these are the regulations for plat approval. They're handled similar to a, a preliminary and, and final plat combined. So they have to submit all those all those conditions for a final plat at time of a uh, first submittal, and they're handled together. Then they go on to a business item to city council. And they'll consider it at a, at a business item. Um, staff finds that with the changes discussed, the proposed subdivision short plat for Wolfpack subdivision, subdivision conforms or substantially conforms within acceptable limits with relevant RMH zoning codes and the city of Nampa subdivision standards pertaining to land division. And we recommend uh, that the development be approved contingent upon the development Developer compliance with various conditions of approval is iterated hereafter. Here are the conditions. Um, I did indicate on K here, applicant shall submit a revised plat prior to city council's consideration. 
showing buildings will not encroach into a 10 foot property line setback. As indicated, that's not really a concern. And so we could uh, remove that from, from these conditions. Okay. I placed a potential motion on the, on the screen and we'd stand for questions. Well, I, mean, I, have, I have kind of an odd question for you. The name Wolfpack goes back in history as something that might be considered not favorable. Mm -hmm. um, is there any consideration given to how we name subdivisions or? No, uh, so city doesn't, uh, city doesn't have any involvement in the naming of the subdivision. <coughs> um, and his, I believe, you know, the applicant's names well, yeah. yeah. So I think that's based on that. I'm not sure. It has Please take no offense. <laughs> okay. Well, I just asking, you know, because I thought of it. Maybe somebody else will. Do we have anybody signed up to speak, Rodney? I don't believe we do, but let's look. Is there anybody here that would like to speak on this matter? Okay. Hurry up, so hurry up. Is there anybody online? Just the applicant has signed up. Okay. All right, I would entertain a motion to close public Second. hearing. Second. Okay, motion by Steve, second by Ron. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. You're opposed, Adam? I was closing public hearing. I'm not opposed. <laughs> You're not opposed. Thank you. <laughs> You're too slow. <laughs> I was just late. Stay awake. And <laughs> okay, so public hearing is closed. So I, I have a question. Want to come back up here for a second? Just can you put the the plat back up there, Rodney, where it shows where the buildings are going to go? So you have a shared driveway with with your neighbor. Where, how is she going to get access to her property with how we have this laid out? I'm just want to kind of understand where. We're putting a, a driveway in for her also. She's right now. She's accessing through um, the one our that property shows to come in there. Okay. And what we're going to do is put a put a road in driveway in for her on on her property. <clears throat> okay, so. It's going to be south of south of my property. Okay. Down the north side of hers. Okay. So she'll get it. You'll put a separate drive in for her that won't have anything to do with your yeah. thing. Okay. That was my only question. Did you guys have any? Hmm. Okay. That's my silly question. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. What do you want to do? Madam Chair, I'll go ahead and make the motion that we recommend for approval. Uh, the preliminary, the short plat for Wolfpack subdivision located at 622 North 44th Street um, for Patrick Wolf uh, with all conditions. Second. Okay, motion by Brett, second by Matt to approve it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That one's. Thank you, all very much. Thank you for waiting. It'll go to city council for them to do the final stuff. But. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Public hearing item number four, conditional use permit for a duplex. Do we have the applicant? <clears throat> Online. Yes. I'm sorry, you're breaking up really bad. Give us your address for the record. Uh, my name is Dylan Tannehill um, with D and D Construction. Okay, tell us what you're wanting to do. Um, the house is in really bad shape, so I would like to take it down. Um, one of the biggest reasons is the foundation is an old rock foundation. And it is not, I mean, it's beyond repair. Um, I'd like to take it down and put in a duplex due to the size of the lot and um, on it, I guess. Okay. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm losing you really bad for some reason. We're going to hear from staff and we may have questions for you afterwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> Madam Chair, Commissioners, uh, Parker Bodley, Associate Planner, City of Nampa. Uh, the action requested of you tonight is the approval or denial of a conditional use permit for a duplex in RS6 zoning district at 824 6th Street North for Dylan Tannehill representing Indy Construction. Uh, the future land use um, map doesn't need the parcel as medium. Hang on. There you go. Okay. The future land use designates it as medium density residential. Uh, the zoning map, um, it is in a RS6 zoning. And the surrounding land uses are all RS6 zoning um, with some uh, commercial to the southeast and uh, light industrial to the northeast. Uh, the parcel is 0.17 acres or 7,405 square feet. Uh, all utilities are available to the property. The current home is uh, uh, connected to utilities as it is now. Um, and the access is currently from North Avenue, 9th Avenue North, um, as you can see on this side. Uh, the applicable regulations in this case, uh, 1032 um, as our schedule of uses, which allows duplexes and an RS a zone conditionally. Uh, 1025 4 uh, sets forth the criteria for um, the conditional use permit, uh, requiring that the use be compatible with and not adversely affect the uh, surrounding neighborhood. Uh, this is the correspondence that we received um, from various agencies. The lot does have utilities available. And any future development will require frontage improvements uh, coordinated with engineering department. Uh, the development is uh, also subject to Title IV building regulations. This is the street views of the house. Uh, as the applicant, applicant stated, they will be tearing down the house and constructing a new duplex, whole new building. Uh, the staff findings, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, the utilities are available, as I stated, and uh, the lot size does meet the requirement for a duplex. Uh, the recommended findings are those listed in the staff report, as well as any other conditions that you may seek to impose. Uh, and I will stand for any questions. Anyone have any questions? Do we have anybody signed up for public hearing? We have a person here, <laughs> live and in person. Come on up, give us your name and address for the record and tell us what you have. Hi, Hopkins, 611 Ninth Avenue North, Nampa, Idaho, 83687. God bless the USA. <laughs> I love Nampa. I love my neighborhood. And it's sad to see old, my old neighbor Lee die. But <laughs> The fact is that property, the utilities are horrendous. My plumbing is bad. I've you had live to, there. Yes, okay. this goes to that. What is it? Eighth, Eighth Street North, and the plumbing. When the I had my I had to do my plumbing from my house all the way through somebody else's property to the to the Nampa City hookup, it kept getting plugged up. I had to fix that and repair repair that on my own. But you know, the plumber said the piping and the, this is just horrendous. The the wires they have come from Eighth Street, and it's 
it's got to be 75 feet of wire hanging off of that pole across my property to this actual. And think about 6,000 square foot house on a 9,000 foot property. Where are they going to park? Off the 9th Street, which is kind of with the church right across Kitty Corner from that place. The traffic right there with the new, uh, uh, what is it, storage place, just which has gotten very, very busy. You got to think about the traffic situation on that too. Uh, just the pre existing, my pre existing grandfathered fence line that we've had to improvise because of just natural things in that property. That will that be grandfathered in, or am I going to have to get my fence torn down and replaced? Am I going to have to be, because there is no sidewalk on any of, on 9th Ninth, Ninth Avenue North, am I going to have to get a sidewalk? Uh, questions that, um, that just, I just don't know. I just came up with this and I just got a, all these questions because I know this guy. There's two gigantic trees there. I had to pull a, a limb off my, my van because the tree fell on my van. These trees need to be gone. They took out the one on the corner when they did the improvements on the on the on the curb and gutter right there. But those trees are horrible. Okay. We'll ask the applicant his intentions with the trees. Uh, what, yeah, I just want to know how how's this all gonna work on a little property like that. That you know, I don't think it's that big. I don't think it's big enough for a duplex. I think maybe for a single family, but not for a duplex. Okay. Um, like I said, I just want to have make sure that my fence line is grandfathered in. Well, if, if your fence is on your property, you have no problem. I'm not sure what it is because we could we we did not because he had part of that fence already hooked up. I just went onto his existing fence line okay. and just finished off off the fence. We'll ask. Okay, uh, that's all. I, that's all the questions I have. Okay, thank you. And Parker, there was nobody else signed up. Okay. All right. I would entertain a motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Steve, second by Jeff to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, yeah. public, public hearing is closed. Can we get, get um, Dylan? Can you unmuted Parker so that we can talk to him? <laughs> I think I'm unmuted. Okay, now we hear you. Okay, so a couple questions that were raised is the trees on the property. What do you are you going to be trimming those? Um, they'll either be trimmed or removed depending on location of the um of the house, but they they will be trimmed no matter what because they are needing in bad bad shape. More than likely, at least one of them will be removed. Okay. If not both. And what about some power lines that are not secure? Is uh, that the power lines, I, I mean, that would be up to Idaho Power. I have no control of where they're going to run their power. Okay. Um, the, uh, but the other thing is, though, he's saying to, um, for a 6,000 square foot, house which would be two three thousand square foot houses and it's not that is inaccurate it'd actually be a three thousand square foot unit for two fifteen hundred square foot units roughly if not uh twelve hundred square foot so your intention is about a three thousand square foot structure yeah or smaller depending on well that also depending on garage sizes and stuff depends on what the architect draws up okay what about the fence uh, if it's on his property, it would be, you know, a grandfathered in. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to remove something that's not ours. Okay. So if it's on your property, do you plan on replacing it or maintaining it? or? It, it depends on how bad a shape it is. Okay. You know, I know the very back one on the one side that would be on the 6th Street, so it would be the side. Um, if you look at the front of the house, it would be the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. that borders up to the abandoned house that one more than likely will either be removed or replaced because it is all falling down and it is not in very good shape at all 
Okay. If I recall right, um, the fence he is referring to is um, when we were cleaning, trying to clean up the property a little bit, um, the, that fence seemed to be in pretty decent shape. So we would not, we would either do improvements to it or leave it as long as it's not like so far off the property line that we're losing like four or five feet of the property. Right. You're going to do your surveys to find out for sure. Yeah. Okay. Did you if, it, if it's four feet off the property line, I'd have to move it just in order to even sell the property. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you, Dylan. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you guys want to do? Yeah. <laughs> Can you put the motion back up there? Yeah. There we go. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the conditional use permit for a duplex in an RS6 zone at 8246 Street North. Um, for Dylan Tannehill, representing D and D Construction Specialists, with uh, conditions of staff included. Second. Okay, motion by Jeff, second by Brett, to approve the conditional use permit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And public hearing item number five, zoning map amendment. Do we have Austin here? Give us your Evening, name Chair. Um, I'm uh, Austin Whiting, 1204 11th Avenue North, okay. Nampa, Idaho. Addresses are hard, I guess. For me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being here, and uh, I've had a really good experience. Parker's helped me out a lot, and uh, thanks for seeing here. I I have this property, and um, or the bank tells me I do, I guess, but <laughs> they I want to put it into a multifamily RD. There's a structure on there. There's a shop that has its own power and plumbing, so I want to turn that into a unit to uh, rent out. Okay. What, to run out as a residential unit or as a yeah yeah as a oh. residential unit sorry okay <laughs> used to be a shoe repair shop is that what it is I, I can't Lynn, figure it out. wasn't it I think that that's where yeah the couple that lived there yeah had, he, mm -hmm. he used to fix shoes because I used to take my he's shoes he's a cobbler hey, no, he's, he's a cobbler there too. he's gonna be gone yeah, he, <laughs> yeah I didn't know that that's interesting no yeah, yeah it's he, kind of an interesting like uh, there's no there's no garage doors, just man doors on both sides. Right. I kind of figured something. I think he like did that. in his kitchen or someplace. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna make it, so it's got a bathroom and it's got the plumbing for that, but no none of that is. You're trying good. to get this through before you go in and yeah. update it to make. Yeah, it I'm trying around. to be proactive. I guess. And okay. My, um, signal to you guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll hear from staff, and then we may have questions for you Terrific. after we hear from them. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, the action requested of you tonight is the recommend, recommendation of approval or denial uh, of a zoning map amendment from RA Suburban Residential to RD, uh, two family duplex residential, uh, for multifamily development at 1204 11th Avenue North for Austin uh, Whitting. Whiting. 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 Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> The applicant has stated to um, split the lot for another unit on the lot. Um, the applicable uh, regulations uh, for rezones is that it must be reasonable, uh, nece uh, reasonably necessary in the interest of the public, further promote the purposes of zoning and agree with the adopted comprehensive plan uh, future land use map for the neighborhood. Uh, the lot currently is 0.53 acres, 23,087 uh, square feet. Uh, the existing zoning, as um, stated, is RA, suburban residential, and proposing RD, uh, duplex residential. 
Uh, surrounding land uses to the northwest is RD, and that is Fawnwood Manor subdivision townhomes and triplexes. To the northeast, uh, Stampede Park and IL across um, 11th Avenue North, and that is Brown Bear Storage. Uh, to the southwest is RA, another single family home, um, and southeast is Snake River Elementary School. Uh, the future land use map designates it as medium density uh, residential, and the requested RD zone does fit within that designation. Uh, the access for the lot is to be determined by city engineering and fire department, depending on how the lot is split. Um, utilities are all available to the site, um, as indicated by engineering. Uh, this is an aerial view of the property. Uh, staff findings are listed in the staff report. Uh, the requested zoning would not create a spot zoning because it is compatible with the comprehensive plan and would be uh, reasonably uh, compatible with the surrounding land uses. Uh, the rec uh, these are the recommended conditions which are listed in the staff report in addition to any conditions that you may wish to impose. Uh, the future development of the property will have to conform to Nampa City Code and be subject to uh, plan review process. Um, I'm not sure how the lot split will go, but it will have to meet City Code. Okay. I will stand for any questions. Isn't it illegal to remove the last shoe repair place in Nampa? Well, if the, if the if the guy that does it isn't there anymore, you kind of are stuck. Maybe you get historical designation or something. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> so, Parker, the the building that's there on the the corner, the metal building, is that that we're talking about making that a residential unit? Or is that building coming down and something else is being put there? You know, I'm not sure exactly what the applicant desires um, or plans how to split it. That wasn't indicated. We, but can, we can ask him when he comes back up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Do we have anybody signed up to testify? Is there anybody online? <clears throat> Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller. <laughs> I don't believe so. I would entertain a motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Steve, second by Ron. All those in favor to close public hearing? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing's closed. Austin, can you come back up here so we can get some information from you? You don't know how happy I am that there's no one opposed. <laughs> that looked terrible. <laughs> The um, so I guess with that building, if if the split goes good and they uh, the city says that it's you know splittable, then that would be fine. If not, then I have the rest of that grass area. I'd be happy that I could build on if that wouldn't go. You know, like this. If you guys didn't like someone living in the shop, the shoe shop, I guess, then the we could split it a different way, and then I'd be interested in building on the grass portion. So your well. preference is to modify the shop. Yes, at least in the meantime. But if you can't, you're willing to build a new structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to fix shoes. Uh, man, I don't think you want to wear my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What do you guys want to do? Last one. You want to sit? Contemplate. <laughs> if I could throw something at you, I would. But there's too many pieces of glass between us. How about a cookie? I bet. <clears throat> can you put the motion back up there so these yeah. people can read it? <laughs> Please. Sure, I'll make the motion that we uh, recommend approval of the zoning map amendment from RA to RD. For multifamily development at 1204 11th Avenue North for Austin Whiting with all conditions. 
Second. Okay. Motion by Ron, second by Brett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now you just got to fight with the city and figure out where to divide it or whatever you're going to do. Yeah. <laughs>